Hi, if you own a rock tumbler or a 3D printer or any one of probably a hundred different types of machine, it almost certainly runs on pulley belts like this one here. And from time to time you're going to have to replace them. And they can be sometimes quite difficult to source, especially if you're buying something like this, a Chinese machine, they're not readily available. But you can buy the poly belt material. I bought this off of Amazon and it's easy to make your own belts if you know what to do. So for our first and simplest method, all you need is a vise. You need some sort of bench vise, preferably. You need your poly belt cut to length. Uh, the way you do that, obviously, if you have a snap belt, you simply measure the length of that. If you have one that's already in place, you simply measure around it to get the right size. Just track around it. You need a knife or a Stanley blade. In this case, I'm going to use this knife, which is a workshop knife I've been using for years. And I like this one because it's got quite a thick blade and it tapers and I've smoothed off this edge so there's no rough, rough edges. And I like the thicker blade because it holds the heat for longer. And what we're going to do, we're going to mount the knife in the vise. Oh, and you need a blowtorch. <laughs> Minor detail, but that's what you need. And what we're going to do is heat up the blade and fuse the poly belt either side but to help us with our accuracy and to make sure we're not wobbling about too much we're going to use a rubber uh, a wooden block so that we can rest on it like that and just that gives us the opportunity of resting our hands on it and being as accurate as possible so let's do it i'm going to heat the blade up until it's red hot It doesn't need to be red hot, but it holds the heat longer. That's also why I'm heating up the length of the blade. It gives you more time. Turn off the blowtorch, put it to one side, and I'm going to hold the poly belt either side of the blade letting it warm up very close to the blade it's quite hot there it's starting to melt now i'm going to touch the two together pull it off upwards on the blade and then put it together and you have a few seconds in which you can move and straighten the joint but then you have to hold it steady keep pushing and hold this for at least a minute perhaps two minutes because it's surprising how long it takes for the plastic to cool down. I keep on pressing the two ends together just to make sure that it's nicely fused in the core of the belt. So there we are. A nice joint without too much of a kink in it. It's got a slight kink, but it's very little. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just sit that down there and leave it for a while. And then we'll come back to it and finish it off. So there we are, the joint is cool. And you can check all the way around it. There's no deformities, no cracks in it. And you can pull it at this stage. And that is a really strong join. To finish it off, uh, I use a standy blade. You can buy flat cutting scissors which are supposed to do this but I just find this works just as well sawing it with a new Stanley blade just trimming the joint all the way round so there we are one poly belt made ready to go and that's a really strong joint I'd struggle to pull that apart it has got a slight kink in it, if you look at that. But I wouldn't bother about that. That wouldn't trouble me in the least. It's very minor. And these belts are designed to run loose anyway. Uh, if that bothers you, though, if you want to make up a really, really straight joint every time, in the next video, I'll show you how to make up a little 
machine that will cost you almost nothing that will create very straight joints, neat joints, every time. So look out for that. Thank you for watching. Keep yourself safe.